call this meeting to order. And first up, we do have citizen communication tonight. Um, the library board welcomes public comment on items relevant to the Pflugerville Public Library. Public comment that is made on an item that is not on the published agenda will only be heard by the library board. No formal action, discussion, deliberation, or comment will be made. Each person providing public comment will be limited to three minutes. Bill? Mr. Harris? Well, I'm Bill Harris. I don't know how long I've lived in Fruitville. Seven or eight years, came down here from Duncanville. And uh, love it. And, uh, but um, the libraries are a hot button with me. And because uh, I'm, <clears throat> I read too much. I'm hung up on magazines. And so you can, you may or may not, my fetish, I, I photographed the empty magazine shelf extensively. It shows all the empty shelves. And we've had a little conversation on it, uh, lack of use, budget, and all the other reasons why it's not being utilized. But, uh, and then I photograph what's left. What's left is four or five publications, Out, Advocate, uh, Southern Living, Consumer Digest, and one or two others, and that's it. Uh, I have several years of past issues and current issues going back with Weird, no, Wired, <laughs> Wired, Mass Company, Forbes, Fortune, uh, uh, a, a lot of business and, business and career type stuff that, that uh, I obsessed over to the point of suffering a tremendous amount of spousal abuse. <laughs> you all know what spousal abuse is. You know, in addition to which, the Business Journal from Dallas and the one from Austin. And, and so I'm, a, uh, I'm not proud of this, and I shouldn't tell you, but, but you, 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 you may be familiar with the word evangelist. Relax. Throw the E away. Place the E, put S-A-R. I'm the only SAR evangelist on the planet. And SAR is an acronym for subscribers, advertisers, and readers of print newspapers, which I need to change to print media because of my obsession with magazines. So uh, I, I, I know a little bit, enough to be dangerous about what's going on in the newspaper business. Obviously, some of it's reflected also in the magazine business because, if nothing else, the cost of paper is going up. And it's interesting to watch the magazine's getting thinner and thinner. So I didn't just fall off the turnip truck. I, I'm not enough to be dangerous. I did, I did graduate by the grace of God from Baylor, which shows that anybody can graduate from Baylor. And, and I, I defy anybody to show me a worse transcript than mine. Anyway, I'm not proud of that. But, uh, but I love libraries, and I love magazines, and I love uh, people that love magazines and so forth. Uh, I, I didn't, just because I live here, doesn't mean I didn't also do the same thing in Taylor. I photographed everything in the, you know, on their, their, their magazines, their newspapers. And by the way, Temple College relies on the Taylor Library as their library. So I have to say that that library is totally inadequate to do anything for Temple students. But that's it's, it's what they've got. And I, I haven't taken any issue with that library and their decision making. I've met the library, the head of it, she's a nice lady. Uh, and a lot of times there's no reason to getting obsessed over it because a, a, lot of it, a lot of it's budget. I don't know how much of it's budget, I don't know how much of it is the influence of the directors, you know, including you and your board. Uh, I do know it's a fascinating study. Then I went on up to Granger and that little tiny, tiny, tiny whatever library they have. That was an interesting study. I photographed all of that. And uh, then I went to Round Rock and I went to Georgetown and photographed all their magazines. Georgetown's pretty, is, is a whole lot better than we've got here, mm -hmm. but it pales compared to Round Rock. Well, Round Rock's library, new library is incredible, as you, I presume you all have seen it. If you haven't seen it, I was up there for the grand opening, I photographed all the people wrapped around it trying to get in. 
you know, on the third floor where they have all the magazines, wow, they've got everything up there. Mm -hmm. Now, there had to be reason for that. And I found out because I, I, I dig. Uh, Michael Dell may have had something to do with that. Very early on, they got substantial support from Dell that impacted what they could do in that library. So don't misunderstand my presence here today. I'm not picking on my hometown library. I recognize the difference. We don't have a Michael Dell that I know of in Pflugerville. But, but I am obsessed over the lack of magazines here. And I see, I see this sheet where I can sign up for, and I notice that nobody is signing up for, for more magazines. And I have no way of knowing over the years what all magazines you have had and, and the lack of readership or how you would know about the readership. So, uh, so uh, one of the things I'm obsessing over is the possibility. I don't like surprises, but one of the possibilities is I could take my, because my gazillion, I don't know how many that is. I could take my piles of past magazines and, and enjoy making them available to people in mid-career, people in industry, people that are looking for a job, people in IT, people that can read where, when you see Bill Gates on the cover, 20 years ago, it's interesting to see where he was in his career. So that, that when you start, when you look at the stories in those magazines, it's hard not to, it's hard not to imagine that there's a need on the part of a lot of people to read those stories. I don't think they know about them, in all fairness. So I can't blame the library for that. But I just did not want me to surface, uh, you know, I'm going around to thank you all of being, I'm, I'm not critical, I'm observational mm -hmm. about our library here in Cougarville. So I just came, I came by as a friend of the library to let you know what I'm doing. And, any in, and I understand you all can't give input, but, uh, and, and I don't know what, uh, is there ever, how do I ever find out what you all think about what I'm talking about? The board could Or can you answer that? <laughs> the board could decide to uh, make it an agenda item if they want to pursue it. Okay, good. Uh, and I could have, If you were in my office at home, you'd see Texas Monthly for years, D Magazine for years, but on Wired, Fast Company, and these things, when you look at the index and you see the stories that are in there, will somebody let me know when I'm at two minutes? Um, you're actually you're past your time. Yeah, we're at about 10 minutes now, so. Yeah. Thank you all. <laughs> I'll, I'll, be, I'll be quiet. Thank you very much. Thank you. I should have had somebody to do that. <laughs> No worries. Thank you very much for, right, thank you all. for letting us know. Thank uh, you. No surprises. <laughs> uh, next up is our approval of minutes. Does everyone have a chance to look at the minutes from last month? I motion to approve. I second. Minutes approved. And next up is our library director's report. Okay, um, so our stats are looking pretty good. They are a little lower than they were this time last year. It's, um, I'm not concerned about it. These are the first um, numbers that we have of the year. Our visits are actually up, um, and our program uh, attendance is way up, so that's great. I'm pretty happy about that. Um, I included some information about some of the programs that we had in October, the Heritage House, um, which Daniel takes the lead on, um, had their annual Harvest Fest, and there were several hundred people. I think it was roughly 500 people. Is that correct, Daniel? Yeah. Yeah, about five, um, who attended that. Um, and we had other family events, including our reptiles and our Project Runway Maker <laughs> program, which is one of my favorites. It's a two-part program. The first part, um, you can create an outfit for your dog. And um, the second part is a virtual runway event. So um, that was a lot of fun. Some of the things that we are um, working on right now um, that we had discussed uh, regarding the, when we were talking about the budget, et cetera, um, are the, is the book vending machine. It's imminent. It should be here any time now. Um, that's going to be our after hours pickup um, spot for people. 
and um, I am right now reaching out to vendors for the um, the little booths, the poppin pods that people can um, use as quiet study space. Um, so I'm contacting several vendors, um, seeing what they offer. Not all of them offer an ADA compliant one, um, but I'm really I really want to get one that's ADA compliant also. Um, so I'll keep looking around and getting um, ideas about the, the different styles. So that is what we're working on. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? For the book vending machine, mm -hmm. would that be then when you reserve your book, you just choose where you want it to be held? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to get trained on it too. I, I don't have a question, but we had the uh, Pflugerville Puzzle Swap uh, last Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, we had 69 people trained wow. out puzzles and stuff like that, so That's it went great. pretty well. Um, how is the the transition? Is it R RIF or RFI? RFID? Yeah, how um, is that going? It's going well. We are um, still labeling because we have 90,000 items. It's taken a little while to, to put the labels on all of them. But we will be moving into the second phase of that project, and that's going to include some of the um, automated services. So the self-check will be much easier and faster for people, and the um, inventory will go much more smoothly. And we will have security gates during this phase. Um, but it's more for um, people who maybe have accidentally ch not checked the item out. It, when you go through the gate, it just lets you know. Um, we don't have a lot of problem with theft um, of people just taking things and walking out with them. Um, most people, I believe, are honest. So um, it's usually just a mistake that they just didn't get it checked out properly. Or we might not have checked it out properly. but. Um, so this will help us catch that. Yes. My daughter and I were able to watch uh, Project Runway um, on the YouTube channel, and uh -huh. it was really cute. Oh, good. I'm yeah, glad you did. That. That's awesome. It is. We have um, also we have a new program um, for our animal lovers because we love animals um, called. Books and Barks, I believe, or Barks and Books. Do you know which one it is? Barks and Books? Barks and Books. Barks, Barks and Books. She would know. She, she promotes it. Um, so that one's cool. It's a, a book club for people and their dogs to attend. My dogs would be nightmares at it, so I'm not a member. But if you have a good dog, you might check that out. That's all I have for the director's report. Are, is the library expecting any increase or decrease in staff for 2024? Um, not for this fiscal year. There are no other questions. Um, that moves us to the Friends of the Fleurville Library Report. Okay, so the Friends um, had another one of their quarterly book sales, and you can see out there there's um, some leftovers. I don't have the numbers on those yet. Um, they haven't met, um, but I believe we'll be meeting next week, so I should have those stats for you next month. Um, you say it went yeah, they usually do go very, very well. So, um, and they're they're being they have a lot of techno savvy people who have joined um, the Friends of the Library. So, yeah, so they're able to do a lot more. Um, they will have a web page coming eventually. They have a Facebook page right now, um, and they're going to do more with the social media. Great. Any questions on the Friends of the Library? Huh? Do, I don't know. do we need to do any, I guess it's just between you and I as far as uh, taking care of the books in perpetuity, right? So I'm just yeah. trying to make sure since I'm yeah. going to go, you know. Yeah. Okay. And uh, my apologies to Tiara. I made you sit here and I didn't have you on the agenda. You were free to go. Okay, sounds right. good. I'll put you on there next <laughs> month. Okay, sounds great. Um, I can include uh, a little bit of, if you look at the um, stats on the director's report, um, you can see that our outreach has doubled since last year, so she's doing an amazing job. Thanks. Next step <coughs> is discuss and consider action on board member leave of absence policy. Um, and Trista. Trista. Is, oh, Hi, everybody. 
Um, I am here to be a resource for any questions you have about the um, excuse and absence policy. In general, our charter says any board member who has been absent for three consecutive meetings without a valid excuse, as determined by the Board of Commission, um, is automatically dismissed, and that is the extent of language in our sort of governing documents. So I'm here to answer any questions. I think there was just a bit of confusion um, about what is excused, uh, and there was a lot of discomfort um, with the idea of, you know, okay, I, I missed the last meeting. I don't really care to share with everybody and on camera so where I was. Don't need to. Um, okay. So that only matters if you're missing three in a row. Mm -hmm. That's the only time we need to worry about someone getting excused absence if you want to continue on the board. Okay. Um, what is excused? That's up for you to decide. It's not the city. The city doesn't have any very specific language because everything happens, right? We can't sort of limit the here's what could be excused, here's what couldn't be excused. Mm -hmm. It'll also vary from board to board um, depending on the time of year. If there's something going on on the board where you can't really go with one less board member for extended absences, that's something to consider. Um, you know, that's really truly really up for all of you to decide as a board. So they don't have to decide for each one? Correct. Okay. So Only if it's consecutive. Only three consecutive. If you're absent for one meeting, okay. So basically Great. the rule we already we had yeah. all prior, it, the rule hasn't actually changed. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Unless and we want to, as a board, enact some more specific absence rules or something. As I think it needs to be sure, it needs to sure. be consistent with other boards. Yeah. yeah. So if you okay. want to provide perhaps some examples in like the, your policies, that's fine. But you can't change the rule, right? right. Three consecutive absences that are unexcused, you're dismissed. Um, when it if you do have three consecutive absences and you want to provide something to the board to provide an excuse, it is completely up to you how much you share. Okay. Um, Right, that's got to be on your your own personal level of comfort and all that right. stuff. We won't even need now. That I hear you saying that we don't have to worry about it until there's three absences. Mm -hmm. but however, we can, as sort of a preemptive measure, be excusing absences on a rolling basis, or even before the app in advance mm -hmm. of missing an absence if we so choose. Sure. Yes, and I would say in that case, um, that should be brought forward by the person who is missing, not by the board. That's, that's kind of where a lot of this started, is I was going to have to miss three, and I told her, mm -hmm. and then there was, it became, you know, a little sketchy on what the rules were, you know. Yes. And so that, right, if you know ahead of time you're going to miss three, totally knew ahead you of time, can yeah. present that to the board when you know, to say, I'm about to miss three, here's why, to mm -hmm. whatever extent your comfort level is, right? And then you, the board can make the decision whether or not they want to excuse three of them, two of them, one of them, right, if you want to give right. one grace meeting great do that if you don't great do that it's at your discretion as the board okay. any, any other, other questions? clarifying questions okay thank you Tristan, yes, for coming. Thank you. it sounds okay. so easy and simple when she says it when i say mm -hmm. it it's a mess <laughs> <laughs> but we don't need 5b yes so with that we don't need 5b since don did not miss three meetings in a row um, if there's no final business to attend to, do we have a motion for adjournment? Do we have how many, the, I thought you were going to provide a list of how many meetings board members have missed in May. I'm sorry, I did not provide that, and I did say I would. Um, well, you did once. I did once, yeah. Yep. <laughs> you had it somewhere. Um, but I will get that to you. I don't recall it being part of a board packet. You weren't you here that was gone? Yeah. yeah. Figures. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I can get you that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Can I motion to adjourn? Do we have a second? A second. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Meet me too. All right.